such things. <laughs> Next up, e we have the U Wing. In all of its delightful Rogue One glory, is <laughs> There we go, there we go. They'll get a good look when I take it out. <laughs> um, it's, it's remarkably small for a large base ship. It is. They've been getting bigger for a it's, while. So. It's a dinky little thing. It's larger than I thought it was, actually, when I got mine. Mm. It's it's one of those things you see you see it online and you see what it looks like on there from from other people. I was I was going to try and avoid from the fact that this has been released elsewhere before it's come into our hands, but um, maybe the engine's picks. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. But always you know, a tricky it's, one those, it's, it's always one of those things. You look at something online and you don't get the true depth perception of the actual size of it. Those move as well. Yes. <laughs> Flight mode, everyone. <laughs> I have to admit, I very much prefer the way the U-Wing looks with its wings forwards. Like, yeah. Ditto, mm. ditto. But it's nice that FFG went to the trouble. Yes. And it's a gorgeous model as well. It's really good. Great detail in it. Mm. They always have been, really. Yeah, but ev every time it seems to be they get better and better. Yeah. And yeah, there's the wings open. I've noticed that the left side wings feel a bit loose on all the sh all on the wing I have and on yours, Robin. Mm, uh, but interesting. Nothing no, doesn't seem like it's dangerous or anything. Just something I've noticed. Yeah. Okay. So beautiful but, looking model. Yeah. Um, and as with every large base ship, a huge pile of things of things that come with it. <laughs> um, let's just let's just. Pick Hedge this wants me to show him the wings move again. <laughs> Of course. You Enjoy, can, Hedge. You can see the wings move. There you go. Look, there we go. You can see the little probably hinge pieces there as the wings <laughs> move out. It's like that. There you go. That is a large stack of cards in that in that pack. There's good, well, some of them there is more than one copy of, so this we can proof. clear some of them in one go. I must admit, when I was watching it in the film, I was like... Yeah, we're trying to look at like some of the abilities and like for example the pivot wing is you know, something that you sort of see in there a little bit as yeah. well. Mm. But when I was watching it I was like Okay, there I can know a, a large base ship that almost fits over the base. <laughs> it's been yeah. a while. <laughs> yes, no ghost this. <laughs> no ghost, no falcon, no twenty four hundred. <laughs> Actually probably, probably size wise in terms of you know Size and so that's probably the nearest comparison is the twenty four hundred in terms of it, you know, its dinkiness in terms mm. of a large base ship, because the the croissants were quite big in their in their way, mm. but yeah. Okay, let's. let's just Undoubtedly, quickly... the ghost is the largest so far. <laughs> yes, let's just quickly I filter out all of the uh, duplicates or things. What? And also, you're mm. putting it into a sort of logical order with the crew a vaguely and stuff. logical order. Yeah, excellent. Um, so before we start discussing anything else, something that has already been touched on, we've got another copy of Sensor Jammer. Finally, <laughs> finally, no longer do you have to buy large quantities of Lambda shuttles just to get more than one copy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to confess, I don't own a shuttle. I may have bought that card singly, but um, <laughs> when I when I started to get into using the Ghost, it was like, huh, that's one way of getting around having no agility. <laughs> Um, effectively, if you have somebody with um, with no focus token to modify that um, focus back to a hit again, mm. effectively that's going saying, well, I've now just got one straight evade on your yeah on yeah. your dice. Um, originally, when it was released as well, a lot of people were like four points. That's really expensive for what it does. Oh well, no, it's not. We've seen it come it's... into a lot more use of late, and mm. there's it so many good. combos potentially with it, like mm. things like Hotshot Copilot, anything yeah. where you're like removing focus tokens from people. Yeah. Suddenly, it really comes into its own. Mm. But anyway, enough about what is what's that? A Wave Two card? <laughs> oh, something like that. <laughs> I think that was the thing though. If it was a Wave Two card when it originally came out, there wasn't many ships at the time that could take sensors mm. or three, as Elliot Snyder was pointing out to us. Um, you know, there wasn't many ships then that could take a sensors, sensor mm. slot, let alone think of ways to necessarily use it. So, as with um, the Striker, we'll run through the generic quickly, and then talk about the title. Um, because, as with the Striker, the title really has a fundamental impact on mm. how the ship functions. Mm -hmm. So, um, starting with our generic, and there is just the one, as with pretty much every support sh support type ship and in the large game. Large base ships general, usually. Large base ships mm. usually, yeah, indeed. Um, we have, at pilot skill 2, the Blue Squadron Pathfinder. 
Um, so that comes with the the standard U-wing stat line of three attack, one agility, four hull, four shields, um, and a sensor, torpedo, and double crew slot. Uh, it can take the focus and target lock actions and comes in at twenty three points. So that's that line. That I like that. Very, that's nice. That's that's is a, very cheap for mm. a big ship. It's 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 a B wing for a point more essentially. <laughs> yes, but um, you get more uh, with more slots. You've got one fewer shield, or yeah. rather, you've got one more hull but one less shield. So you've got the same you know hit points total, just uh, slightly differently distributed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a different a different slightly different or well, slightly better upgrade bar. Yeah. Well, but if you think about the the B wing, if you're saying the U wing is one point more than the the basic basic blue. Mm. You pay one point to ha- have the modification to give it a crew. You get two crew in there as standard. Yeah, it's true. Um, so, fairly decently priced for the generic, I think. Um, mm. I will not be at all surprised to see mm. some of these floating around with a fire control system yeah. stuck on there. 25 points, that, that very nicely drops into a lot of lists. It really does. Or even a couple if you don't know what to do with another 50 points. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've even seen people talking about running four... four. Four fire control systems, system. blue squadron pathfinder lists. Means our um, action every single turn is going to be focused if that ship is you're still your target. It's it's besides anything else that, that then becomes four large bases on the board. Mm. Yeah, um, that can stop and turn on a dime. That can yes, and just turn around. Stop and turn on a dime. So that that brings us nicely to the pivot wing title, um, and the pivot wing title is another first for X wing. It is a double sided title card. Um, We've we've seen this in adaptability in the past, but this one this one has a little bit more going on. This one can potentially flip during the game itself, mm. and not just at the start going mm. this or this. So it makes it a much more interesting use of this uh, double sided mechanic they've got. Mm. Yeah. they're trying to do. So yeah. um, the pivot wing title is a zero point U wing only title, and as you can see there, it's a dual card. Um, the attack side. Uh, increases your agility value by one. After you exit a Q to maneuver, you may flip this card. And you may be asking yourself, why would I ever want to flip away from something that is increasing my agility value? Well, the other side does something pretty good too. Um, on the pivot wing landing side, when you reveal a zero stop maneuver, which the U wing does does indeed have on its dial, mm-hmm. uh, you may rotate your ship 180 degrees. After you exit a Q to maneuver, you may flip this card. So yeah, you can you can stop on the spot. And decide around. that you want to be facing in a different direction. Mm. You have effectively a speed zero K turn. I was, I was saying. Even to... Countess Riot can't do that. <laughs> no. No. I was, I was actually talking to to Elliot when I was taking him home um, last night because the effectively that's a naught K turn. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about putting Hero in my build because of the the title, and then obviously as you can see from my my build, I put that on Chopper instead. Mm. Mm. But something I was considering was this whole potentially infinite nor K turn situation. But then on the other hand, I was thinking, what happens if they're touching? Could you actually do that nor K turn? Because technically it doesn't move, but it's bumping. It's still bumped. Um, it just happens when you reveal the maneuver. So yes, I would say yes. But yeah, it's an interesting, it's, it's an you interesting don't, thought, though. It doesn't even say you have to successfully execute the manoeuvre, which, no. of course, if you're doing a zero stop, you are you are always going to successfully execute, <laughs> execute a zero stop. Whether just, you like it when or not. you reveal it, you can do it. I, I would, I would it's laugh. Not an action. I would laugh so having to see sure five ships being moved out of the way to do that manoeuvre, though, and put everything <laughs> back in the right place. I think this is why it's on the landing side. So, at the very least, the wings are a little more compact. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, I think it's a fascinating. Um, Upgrade. Um, mm. I think we are mostly going to see it being flown around on the attack side. However, um, I think True. I think it's I think it's a nice it's a nice trick. The I landing think, side. I think it's something you want to use this. occasionally, and it does mean that unlike the shuttle, I think the it's shuttle, the only uh, turnaround that it's realistically got, so unless it you're does. going to, you know, do some hard turns. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's there's, this there's, one. There we are. That one there. No, there's there's three no, still obviously. in the middle. There we go. <laughs> but also in the in the film yeah. as well, but uh, when they uh, can't remember where they they land now. Um, but start sort of towards the start of the film, you start mm. you actually see a U wing come into land and actually do that 180 degrees as well. Mm. So the moment I saw that, I went, "Oh, that's exactly what the card says." Yeah. So I can see where that's you know being brought across, which is quite nice as and well. Other than that, it has it has um, two hard white. 
So it's not as though turning around is impossible for it. No. The dial is an interesting thing. It is, in my opinion, infinitely better than the, the Lambda shuttle. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. A lot of people have been comparing the two ships, but this is a completely different beast. Like, you've got... The only got, red is its stop. The only red one is its thing. stop. It's got that um, block of speed one and speed two green manoeuvres mm-hmm. that is, like, very similar to mm. the arc. I was going to say the arc. I've, yeah. I've, that's the you know, straight-up similarity. Yeah. Um, and you've got a two-hard turn that doesn't, um, that doesn't, doesn't stretch, stretch you. Out. No. Um, which is a wildly different experience. This can turn yes. around in two turns. It can. Unlike the lander. Yeah. Um, or in one. Or in one if you uh, if you want it to. Or in one if you want it to. I'm not willing to risk a ton of one agility. Mm. I think uh, one of the interesting things about the landing side, though, is it does flag a turn ahead. It does. What your intentions are. Or um, it could be one of those elaborate double bluffs. You could bluff it. So you say, I'm going to have it here... It- and after you execute that manoeuvre, go, aha, I'm now going to be in range for lots of shots. I was tricking you all along. I was never going to do that nought K turn. we turn it back to the agility side. Mm. So you can make it seem like you're going you to could. do the nought K turn, but never actually touch it. You could try to use it as a, uh, as a trick. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a risky... risky <laughs> it's a very risky, risky trick. trick. Uh, <laughs> high risk, high reward. Mm. Potentially, yes. It's, it, I'm not sure we'll see that done very often, but... Um, no. When it does come up, it's good. It's, uh, I want to see it at least once. Yes. New pilot or? Um, so we will we will move on to Two. the first of our unique pilots. Yeah. Um, so this is pilot skill three. We've got Hef Tobber. Um, for um, the same stat line again. Um, 24 points. No elite pilot talent. Um and after an enemy ship executes a manoeuvre that causes it to overlap your ship, you may perform a free action. Yeah, that is that's an interesting one because you never normally get actions when you're either a bumped, or yeah, when you're bumped or when you're touching. Mm. But Hef is saying, well, now you can. Specifically yes. with Hef, you can move into position, take your focus, yeah, or take your target lock, then get bumped, and boom, then get the other. Yeah, yeah. Or crew. Or a uh, crew action if it has them. Yeah. Yeah. Someone just pointed out, which we'll get to later, Cassian and Daredevil. Daredevil is a manoeuvre. It is. It is. <laughs> it's an interesting idea. Yes. But there are, unfortunately, some problems. minor timing problems with this. It's it's the first thing that crossed... Ironically, it is the first thing that crossed my mind <laughs> when Cassian was revealed alongside the pivot wing. Can I manage to do both in a turn? And it's been clarified, unfortunately, that you can't. But it's a fascinating, fascinating idea. We'll yeah. get to that. We'll, we'll get, get to that. that. Um, no. Hef. So, is uh, pilot skill three for one point more than the generic. Yeah. And a nice... And, and an ability as well. And an ability, yeah. yes. Hef's, Hef's there to get in the way. Clog, yeah. Gum up the works for your opponent. Yeah. Um, and get a bit of action efficiency out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That potentially plays, that plays with, right to my boat with the action efficiency. Yeah, potentially with, with the Z crew, he can then shoot the thing that's bumped him with a whole bunch of uh, modifications, which they don't have because they lost their action. I think Z yeah. is more or less going to live on this ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, um, that's a nice thought. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> there's there's some interesting combinations between Hef and the Jin Erso card as well, but we'll, yes. um, we'll get to that when we get to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think Hef's a very decent upgrade for just one point more. Um, I would strongly consider taking him over the generic if I've got the spare point floating mm. around. Yeah. Uh, next of all, we have got a pilot skill four, Bodhi Rook. Um, same stat line, same upgrade bar. Uh, Twenty five points, so one point more than Hef. <laughs> When a friendly ship acquires a target lock, that ship can lock onto an enemy ship at range one to three of any friendly ship. Yeah, that's that's a nice little ability. That I like. I like that because it's mm. like effectively potentially like a range six target lock ability. Um, range, so you have a friendly ship at range three. Yes. Of of Bodhi, for example. Bowie then can acquire a target lock to something to range three of that. Oh. So potentially you range. To, you don't have to be in any range of Bodhi. So, oh, when a friendly ship. Any friendly, any ship you have on the board. Yeah. As long as some, as long as the thing you're trying to target lock is in range one to figure. Well, I mean, in this got. case, using using Bodhi as the as the prime mm. prime start of that combo. Potentially, you could have a 
target lock travelling range six or even from where it started. Farther. I mean, they don't have to be at range one. Of course, yeah, yeah. If you've they if you've got anywhere. if you've got Bodhi and. For example, the one that immediately sprang into my mind was Heroes of the Resistance Han Solo. Of course. Yeah. Han, Han can be over in the, your uh, opponent's deployment zone. In um, <laughs> in uh, target lock range at turn one, so that you apply all your target locks right there and then. Now, mm. the only thing is Han can't deploy within range three. No, but, but he can get into that yeah. at the uh, combat at the, in the first turn. Yeah. If he's effectively sitting just outside there, so in range band four, mm. yeah, it isn't going to take much to move from four to three. No, he's a big place ship. He can go, and it's uh, quite fast, the Falcon. And, 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 nice and playing at pilot skill nine. I was being um, shown Dutch Vander. Um, yeah. yeah. When I, I, was... can, I, can, I can see Dutch having some interesting combos going on there. Well, yes. My first actual <laughs> yes, list Dutch build, which I... Be friends. Mm, my, fir- my first actual list build with <laughs> the U-Wing was actually featuring Bodie, Dutch... And another target lock friend who we saw with the arc arc lists, Shara Bay. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, she can use pass high you know, weapons engineer Shara, getting target locks halfway around your board for something else to use. You've completely freed up their actions. Mm. I I think Brody potentially is... Bodhi, Han and as many cheap Z ninety fives with a missile as you can get for. A... Could potentially be a yeah. pretty decent alpha strike. Mm. I, I think case. it does. I think it does some very interesting things. Mm. I, my gut instinct is that Bodhi is not someone we're going to be seeing in like top tier competitive play. I think I think his ability leans a bit more towards the kind of like you need to put quite a lot of things in place to to get the most out of it. But it, it creates some fascinating opportunities for ordnance lists. He's perfect in the same way a ton of art is perfect for epic. Yes. Mm. Mm. yes. That is very true, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, you know, I, li- I like his ability. It's a nice little ability. Um, it's, it's something, again, again, you have to build around and think, well, how mm. many uses am I going to get out of this and where am I going to get um, get the uses out for it? Because mm. if you take, for example, the Phantom, the, sorry, the, um, the shuttle, or the attack yeah. shuttle, mm. it doesn't have a target lock action naturally. So you can't do it off something like this, but with Dutch, it could acquire a target lock through that method. Yes. But then with Bodhi, but it's it's something to consider. You have to, you definitely have to work around that. I it's think. not something you drop into a list when you've got some points to spare. No. But no. if you so, drop it into a list with the points to spare, why not use the generic? That's that for me is the real difference between Bodhi and Hef. Hef mm. is someone where you've got a points points spare over the generic uh, pathways. Well. Just like I may as well. He's better and he can do some interesting things. Yeah. Bodhi is someone where you want to build a, the synergy into your list from, mm. from the ground up. Yeah. So, and last uh, of all, Cassian, Cassian Andor. Um, pilot skill 6, um, the standard U-Wing stat line, but adds an elite pilot talent to his upgrade bar. Can I get the card? Because the card I found is actually awful in terms of quality. Not a problem. It was like, I, that quality is actually what I found on an expertise card online the other day when I was when I was yeah. Chelsea, but... Um, and but yeah. for for a uh, pilot ability, I will just have to wait for the card to come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got at the start of the activation phase, you may remove one stress token from one other friendly ship at range one to two. So it's worth noting the word other friendly ship. Cassian yes. can't de-stress himself. You cannot. But even with that said, that is a very interesting ability. Oh, mm. you know what I've just thought of now. Mm-hmm. Mentioning Wingman earlier. Mm-hmm. Wingman at the start, of, so it's basically near enough the same timing phase. At the end of the activation phase, start of combat phase, they kind of at that point really merge into um, one. Well, this comes to start the activation. Phase. Oh, start the activation phase. Yes. Oh, my apologies. That's all right. But, but is... it's still potentially that removing that stress before something, uh, before something moves. So something that was stressed before is now not stressed, which then opens up K turn stress moves, mm-hmm. um, signals loops. And yeah. stuff like that. It just opens up dials. Mm. It's 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 fantastic for that, and it does mean that if you've got a self-stressing elite pilot talent, yeah. like push the limit or rage, or rage, yeah, um, it becomes much more manageable. Yeah, um, or just even if you're dealing with a stress control list. Yes, like someone's someone's decided to bring R three A two, and Cassian Andor is going to make them sad. Yes, <laughs> yes. I was I was um, I think I'm going to get onto this point a, a bit earlier than I was necessarily going to. Um, 
there's another card that comes out later which does a similar similar kind of stress removal. <coughs> yes, but, we'll we'll get onto that when we get onto our inspiring mm, recruit. But ironically, I think I think last night's game, or one of my games from last night, was kind of telling me something that I needed to remove move some more stress some other way and ironically the U-Wing had the answers but was not available to me last night um, another thing not necessarily stress control but the critical from the damage deck the thrust control fire mm-hmm. where you take a stress and then turn that crit down Yeah, I unfortunately got hit a double blow last night which was not only did I get that crit <laughs> I, did a, I did a red manoeuvre so I was double stressed and I also at the same time had damage sensor array so before having this as an ability, it was um, you know two two stress to remove, only being able to remove one stress a turn. So it would take me at least two turns to remove mm-hmm. the damage sensor array. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I had chopper on the on Kanan last night, but I wasn't going to take a damage to do that early. No. You no. know it wasn't worth it. But at that point in the game, it was hook line and sinker for me. I couldn't <laughs> remove that. If that you know anything with that, but that could have been all sorted in one turn. Yeah, Cassian. Cassian's got a lot um, going for him on that front. Um, the pilot ability is great. The fact that he's got an elite pilot talent, talent is great as well because um, the U wing is a ship that can yeah. benefit from a lot of different. Mm. So we're seeing talents. a two pilot skill and an EPT being worth two points here. Yeah, yeah. Because he's a uh, twenty-seven. Which again, he these neither of these two ships is particularly expensive. I think it's following also the Thai Strikers um, two point difference for pilot skill and EPT. Well, this is getting two pilot skill and EPT for two points. Ah, yes, so, yeah. rather than rather than the one. So we've got a few upgrades a to, to them, yes. shift through here. So we'll uh, we'll get a move on and probably do a fairly brief overview. Something that's worth noting is you do also get two copies of Stealth Device in this. So if you're a Rebel player mm-hmm. who has been desperately wanting to get your hands on some Stealth Devices, um, you're in luck. Yeah, there you go, two of them. Mm. Um, I'm slightly baffled about its inclusion on a one agility ship. I've got to be honest, but um, well, this was something I was considering on a build with a pivot wing title on the agility side and a stealth device. That's potentially starting off with a three agility base yes. and with a sensor jammer. And with a sensor jammer, you can mitigate jammer. one of that damage. Yeah, uh, then it, you might be able to see your uh, your stealth device last a little longer than you otherwise would. Mm. That was something that I was considering putting into the build, but I changed my mind. Mm. So, uh, moving on to upgrades, yep. we've got two copies of the Expertise Elite Pilot Town, one of which I will hand over to Elliot <laughs> for, for screen, screening purposes. Uh, expertise, four point Elite Pilot Talent, so really, really expensive, but when attacking, if you are not stressed, you may change all of your focus results to hit results. That's like a yeah. marksmanship for three points. It's not it's, an action, and you won't necessarily. You know, if you're yeah. not stressed, it's and you're saving your, and you're potentially if you have a focus token, you're saving it for defense. Defense. It's um, stunning. Or you're letting yourself do another action. It's excellent. Mm. I'm I'm a huge fan of expertise. Mm. Um, to me, it's the <laughs> first four point elite pilot talent that's actually worth it. Um, Pretend, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it removes the need to take a focus action on mm-hmm. like low agility mm-hmm. ships. Yeah. Um, it it gives you solid, consistent uh, damage output if you've mm-hmm. got multiple attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you wanted to go really, really out there, you could uh, put it on um, Horton's arm with a twin laser turret um, and via via the R two R two D six two two attacks a turn, <laughs> rerolling your blanks. Um, and then focusing, and up. Then focusing so, every focus result you get on both mm, of them. Ugh. But like even on things like um, <laughs> Dengar, it's potentially yeah. got some uses. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything that's packing Gunner, it's good. Yeah, like it's just well, a really something with, solid with thing. Gunner and uh, Hotshot Copilot. Mm. What about what about something like the old uh, no the old Hound would then cancel the dice. You could yeah. argue that it's cheaper to equip and more efficient to equip Luke though. Yeah. Although you only convert one, but it's more efficient. Mm. But that's only good if you're a rebel. True. <laughs> is not uh, mm. is not unique to anybody. Um, I I'm a big fan of expertise. Mm. Um, it's it's an exciting addition to the game. It is. I'm 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 gonna like seeing some people using that. I might even get my hand on one of those myself and just go. Yeah, let's see how I can build around this. Uh, then we've got an assortment of crew cards, uh, and nice. thanks to Rogue One, we've got quite a few of these. Mm. Um, 
First up is Bayes Malbus, uh, Rebel Only Crew. Um, three points. After you perform an attack that does not hit, you may immediately perform a primary weapon attack against a different ship. You cannot perform another attack this round. So, Baze is effectively a two point discount gunner where you have to shoot at someone nice. else. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Mm. I I think he's quite niche. If you don't have he's if you don't have the points for gunner, I think. Or if you want to pair him alongside something like Hotshot Co pilot again. Uh, yes. Again. Um, yeah. Or like R three A two and you want to spread the stress around. But that makes sense. Actually. I think yes. I think he only really works where you are specifically trying to build towards I want to make attacks against multiple different ships. Mm. Um yeah. ninety percent of the time I think finding the two points of a gunner is going to be better. Yeah. The better call. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it also depends on what actions you've taken. You might end up in a situation where you went as a focus and you have to spend that focus Yeah. Uh, on a ship that you haven't got pushed the limit on. You've got no tokens. The first attack fails because <laughs> you have very dice, very bad dice modifications, so you try and hit something else. And or in both situations, could force token, um, token strips. He does pair well with a couple of cards that are coming up um, in later expansions in Wave 10 um, as both captains, uh, Captain Rex and is it the Operations Expert? Uh, Where you can start dishing focus tokens around on Mr. Tex. Yes, I think so. Um, yes. might, might produce some interesting results there. Mm. So I think, I think Bayes mm. might be a bit of a wait and see and we, mm. we might see some upgrades coming shortly that will um, make him click a bit better. Mm. Uh, next up we've got Bistam uh, another rebel only crew uh, two points when attacking at range 1 to 2 you may change one of your hit results to a crit result that could work I was going to say that could work quite interestingly on um, on the likes of uh, okay. 10 num oh of course oh, yeah. one that's... 10 num because you then get yes. um, uh, that focus to a crit which then that crit can't be evaded on the likes of 10 num uh, true, but he can already take a, a Mangler Cannon, which does the same thing at range three. It's true, mm. but though I think that's I think that's what Biston really does. Yeah. He's he's a half price Mangler Cannon. Yes, that takes a, a crew slot. Yes, because <laughs> I I built him round a um, <clears throat> an auto blaster ten num uh, ten num with Ezra build before mm-hmm. with you know and and Bitsan in the way is doing like a unstressed requirement version of what Ezra could do hmm. so he's one point cheaper and you don't necessarily have to be stressed for <coughs> Ezra to, to, to click hmm. which is, I, I like that it's, I think I've got some ideas on where I could take that I think Bistan's, I think Bistan's interesting um, there's enough two point rebel crew that I think he's going to be quite low on my list um, because we've got a couple coming up very shortly in fact who I'm very excited about mm. Um, but I definitely think he'll he'll have a place in certain builds, particularly where, as you say, you've got pilot abilities that synergize with, with that t- with, with getting that crit. A, being able to guarantee some crits. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Bodhi Rook, um, another Rebel only crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, one whole point. Uh, when you acquire a target lock, you can lock onto an enemy ship at range one to three of any friendly ship. So a a, uh, a version, version of his own ability. Mm. Yeah. He, so it only affects the ship he's on rather than everything you've got but you don't need his ship to do it yeah um, I think it could be useful mm. um, if you're like flying a K-wing around that doesn't have anything better to do with this cruise slot for example yes um, it's only a point it is only a point and if you've if you've got some ordnance on that K-wing the ability to take some target, target locks at, at convenient moments when you've gone it's somewhere way out of range what that does there is means you're having you've got you've still got your guidance chips, but you have a very similar ability to your long range scanners. Yeah, you can effectively have uh, have the benefits on both. There are dentels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um. So now we're entering into the two point rebel crew, where I I'm I'm genuinely excited about them. <laughs> um, we've got Cassian Andor, rebel only once again. Um, at the end of the planning phase, you may choose an enemy ship at range 1 to 2. Guess aloud that ship's bearing and speed, then look at its dial. If you are correct, you may rotate your dial to another manoeuvre. Uh, with with a nice picture of Cassian taking taking a sneaky snapshot round a corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of something like... Um, 
What's uh, intelligence agent? Would that interact with that? So you could look at their dial, then you can at call it. At the end it. of the planning phase, no. Yeah, because the, uh, the intelligence agent happens start. later. Of the activation. Ah, uh, okay. They even would have to trigger first. I think they very deliberately were. Put that in that window, do. so you can't inter. But to be fair, but you're putting what two three really... slots for intelligence agent and Cassian Endor for three points. I'm not sure. There's a huge amount of. I mean, you're basically, you're checking two things. Which isn't bad, I guess, but... For me, Cassian Endor mm. is a one-point upgrade to an intelligence agent that potentially gives you... Yeah. Some... Some... I mean, insurance. What he, what he really does is you have an enemy ship that could go one of two places. You really want to bump it. You plan for one, you guess the other. Um, yeah. If, the, if you uh, you plan for the wrong one, you switch. Yeah. That's, that's the important thing about Cassian. You don't guess the manoeuvre that you've planned for, you've guessed the manoeuvre for the one that you were hoping that they wouldn't do. Yes, you go for the other one, that way you, you cover your bases. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know I've had an awful lot of games where they could do this, they could do that, I don't know, gotta guess. Get it wrong, you lose. Uh, Cassian saves you from that. I'm sure anyone who's played against Cynthia Fell has had those moments where they've been like, <laughs> well, he could do a two hard turn or he could do a four forwards. You and I can only stop one of those. Yes. Now yes. with Cassian Andor, you can stop oh. both. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, so I, he, I think he is going to turn up an awful well, lot. You could have um, that situation. Anything that wants to, any any time the rebels have a ship that wants to bump, it's going to have Cassian on it. Hmm. What? What you mean to say, like Heftober? Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's going. If I may, but it's going to make clearing stress a much more uh, kind of when will you clear stress rather than will you immediately clear stress because you can easily telegraph the clearing mm. of the stress. Mm. 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 But it's yeah. also one of those things. Thinking about the U-wing <laughs> as a as a general, it says to any manoeuvre so if you've got it on the mm-hmm. landing side that could then be that nought that nought K turn if you're not stressed it could be yeah 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 you know it's one way of thinking about it it's to any manoeuvre it's not like Hera's ability where you lock in a red manoeuvre but you could change it to whichever red different. or whichever green Although um, Hera's ability works during the activation phase mm. this is the end of the planning phase so before you've seen anything else yeah. move but um, you have seen one dial. Yeah. I'm fully expecting Cassian to completely replace Intelligence Agent in Rebel Lists. I think you're probably right. Like, for the extra point, you get He's so much more out of it. just better. Yeah. You see the dial, and if you're right, you get to choose a different manoeuvre. If yeah. you don't, yeah. you know at least where it's going. Yeah. It's yeah. it's very solid. Um, next up, um, we've got Jin Erso. Uh, Rebel only once again. Two points once again. As an action, choose one friendly ship at range 1 to 2. And this doesn't say other, so you can apply it to yourself. Assign one focus token to that ship for each enemy ship inside your firing arc at range 1 to 3. You cannot assign more than three focus tokens this way. So, before we get into the mechanics, I mm-hmm. love this card from a flavour perspective. Mm. The worse the situation is, the more hope Jin can give to everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a rallying call, isn't it's, it, really? Yeah. Um, and especially the, the chance to have three focuses in a turn yeah let's imagine yeah. if you choose a hawk with mouldy crow yeah. just imagine that focus stack that has now just gone onto a mouldy crow card. well it's now gone from zero focus it's used its own action to focus and then been given more by Jin. assuming so it's got four uh, focuses five, or five. Uh, uh, potentially five if it's mm. got a uh a, what a thing uh, recon, recon spec, rec spec that's the one it's a brilliant support card yeah, um i think excellent. i think if you've got a ship where you yeah. are Wanting to guarantee some focus for yourself, but you also want to be able to play in a support role, so potentially something like the Ghost mm-hmm. or the K- Kanan's Ghost, for example, his ability yeah. works around yeah. the focuses. Um, this this gives you a lot of flexibility. Mm-hmm. It's a point cheaper than a recon specialist, but it is a little bit more situational. Um, yeah. But I, I think it's good. Um, I think the ability to pass those focuses off to other ships. Is the really that key many point focuses, there. three focus tokens to the mm. thing. It's, yeah. uh, if you can get yourself where you've got three enemy ships in all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you've, uh, well, you know. Um, it's going to be interesting flying Genoso against Ty Swarm, so let's put it that way. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it is. How many are you going to get? Let's see, <laughs> like, shall we? Flying back think... with um, choosing, say, um, Jake in an A Wing. Yeah. And then he can, uh, he's, he's got a whole bunch of things pointing at him. Suddenly he's got a, even more focus tokens and he's not there anymore. Yeah. Mm. Um, Jin, Jin is really solid, in my opinion. Like, I think she's well worth the two points. And again, I think she's going to be a, a staple of some rebel lists. I think she towards. is. 
It's not once per round, Jake Farrell. No, it isn't. Technically, the three tokens, do you sign all in one go, or can you both boost and borrow roll the Jake off the stand? You know what? <laughs> Let's send Frank Brooks an email about that. He'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I, think, I think the answer to the question is, does it go in a packet, or does it go as, individ- it, as an individual? Because my instant thought, playing obviously quite a few card a, games, assign one token to that ship for each enemy ship. One, two. You don't. It's, it doesn't. I, it could go either way. Mm. Does it potentially? Does, yeah, does it go That's as a packet, got, or does it go as individuals? That is something that they stack? are going to need to errata at this point. They're going to need to clarify that yes, because if will. you can suddenly have Jake um, boost, <laughs> boost barrel, barrel roll. roll after he's uh, when does oh uh, Jin has it does it as an action yeah. she can also do it on a lower scale and make him do it before he moves or even after he moves yeah and after he's done his normal actions which would probably be foc- uh, focus or e- oh not focus but uh, um, a target lock or a a target lock evade uh, I'd assume yeah. both because uh, yeah. he's going to have push but the yeah. so then he's it's target like... so then he can target lock evade get three focus tokens boost and barrel roll for like what, seven actions <laughs> the last essentially thing, the last thing I want to say about Jin as well is, you know how you're saying there are some cards that are really well suited to epic play? Yeah. Ginerso yeah. is really well yes. suited to epic play. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, what's this? Ginerso aboard the CR90 with its massively wide firing arcs. Broadside. <laughs> Focus tokens for everybody. Well, uh, choose one friendly ship. It's that true. Can do yes, it. yeah. uh, lots of focus tokens for this guy. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, even even let's say that why let's say that all goes over in one packet and it triggers as a packet. Yeah, if then Jake does his focus action, two lots of two lots of focus timings, barrel roll off one, boost off the other. You still I've just thought of something. Mm. Yes, go on. An awful a Jin Erso giving an awful lot of focus tokens to um Esege Tuketu in the K Wing. <laughs> <laughs> and then other people can spend his focus tokens. Yes. Oh yeah. That's a good point. I like that. <laughs> Oh. As if, as if the rebels needed more ways to do things with focus tokens. <laughs> oh no, uh, show, give, uh, give the focus to Garv Andreas. I'm sure he'll love to spend spend the, them spend yeah. on the fence to then pass them <laughs> off to people. Do you know what? I might, have, else. I might, I might have yes. to rebuild my focus looping oh. list now. <laughs> excellent. No, um, Jin is excellent. I think. And for our final upgrade card from the U Wing pack, mm-hmm. uh, we've got the Inspiring Recruit. Mm. Um, it's worth noting this isn't faction restricted. Nope. Um, so this can this can go on any any ship with a crew slot. Mm. Once per round, when a friendly ship at range one to two, and note again, it's not another friendly ship; it's a friendly ship, so it does apply to itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, removes a stress token. It may remove one additional stress token. Mm. There's also one other thing That's to note: there is two copies of this in this in this yeah, box. You get two of them. So you don't get one; you get two. <coughs> this is going to be everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's only a point. It's one point, and it's a massive protection against stress control. Um, yeah, or situations where you get multiple stress in a turn, or want to clear multiple stress in mm-hmm. a turn. Yeah, any, rage. Anything, any, rage. Anything that's got a crew slot and an EPT. Um, <laughs> an inspiring recruit rage build is going to be is going to be lovely for them. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's what I've gone with with my uh, Dengar build mm, for for the scum list. It it's, makes it's sense. Range and it makes an recruit. awful lot of sense. And then you've got that horrific stack of mods on both your attacks. Yes. Um, and then you're going to re- uh, clear all your stress next turn. Do it again. Mm. Yeah, that's. It's also worth noting it works with Cassian Andor. It so does. Cassian Andor can take a stress off. Use inspiring recruits to take another stress off. Yeah. Or well, yet again, as I was mentioning earlier, like the wingman combo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, as Cassian and the inspiring recruit occur in the same range band, so if uh, if one triggers, the other one. If triggers. one triggers, the other one will just tri- will trigger. Mm. Wingman is also in that range one to two bubble as well. So mm-hmm. yeah. wingman, I think, is just range one. But I thought it was one and two. I think it's Double just check. range one. I, re- I remember being doing a lot of being at range two with my wingman Jess Pavra during the escalation corner and, and, and being so that, that, that is, is wrong, Yes, that uh, is range just one. range one. Oh, oops, I was but, playing it wrong last time. But week. if Man. wingman triggers, then inspiring recruits will also trigger. So mm. it, it, it's still it, doable. It, yeah, it's still doable. It's, just, uh, it's not range band two. Karkatan? Yeah. Yeah. More focus. More focus. More focus, please. Um... <laughs> I think it's I think it's a really interesting card. Mm. I think it does a lot of interesting things. And I think at the moment that we are just starting to see stress control coming back into the meta, we've got things like um the the Braylon Ham stress hog build. Mm-hmm. Um we've we've got other stress control options starting to see more play. We've got yeah. um Ventress 
yep. getting a lot of use from the scum. This is quite a hard counter to yep. a lot of those. Um, it only works on things that have got crease slots, so there are definitely some lists where this just is not of it's any not use. viable. Um, but I the triple defenders it, are still going to are still going to be sitting at it, they're staring at that with uh, yeah. But why? Their eyes. Yeah, but why? Yes. Um, or I was thinking the imperial aces, <laughs> mm. like. Um, What's one of the more common ones? Well, you've got um, Suntir Fell, Darth Vader, yeah. Yeah. and like the Inquisitor. None of them have access to crew slots. No, nope, none of them can take well, an Inspiring Recruit. We were talking about Captain Yor earlier. And mm. you put Inspiring Recruit on Captain Yor, and the fact that he's pulling stress tokens onto himself becomes so much less of a problem. Yeah, As true. he can then burn two of them off every but time he does a green he has He's limited to how many he can, yeah. he can pull. Yeah, um, he's going to quite like this. Yeah, potentially. Interesting times. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, that's the upgrades and everything from those packs. What do you yep. think, everyone? I th- I definitely think both of them are going. <laughs> yes, both <laughs> of them are going to get. You know, whether it be the U wing as a, as its ship, or the upgrades from the U wing, or mm-hmm. the Tie Striker, and <laughs> the upgrades obviously in the, on the more on the Imperial side. I think everything is going to get played. Both ships have got some really interesting things that they can do, and um, both of them come with some upgrades that are going to be incredibly useful somewhere else. Mm. Um, I I do think these are really quite nicely put together packs. Yeah, I think I think they are very solid ships in both mm. cases. Um, I don't think either of them are going to create a fundamental upheaval in the meta. Um, Probably not. Um, with the exception of Duchess, because I think Duchess is going to be a go-to staple of Imperial Ace yeah. in so many builds. I can see that slot in that some low, Aces lists. That um, low uh, points cost yeah. um, means that you can, you can have her and something that's more expensive with your, uh, with your power triple. Well, she's, yeah. she's, she's an aggressive alternative to Omega Leader, yeah. in my opinion, because they're precisely the same points cost mm. with their, like, in my mind, optimal loads out, loadouts. Mm. And um, Duchess, with her ability to effectively turn that adaptive value on and off like a switch. That's the that unpredictability. I'll take the unpredictability after the, over the denial. I'd say if I had that option. Mm. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of the uh, Blue Squadron Pathfinder generics as well I because so, they yeah. are they are wonderfully cheap. They've got yes. that sensor slot to be able to stick a fire control system on there. Yeah. Um, I think there is a legitimately mm. viable build with four mm-hmm. of them with fire control systems I think we'll see that I do think we will see that turning up I've That's, heard uh, talk at them very very good they punch like B-wings and yeah. have four large bases to just clog up the board for your yeah. opponent and have an extra agility on top of that the real thing that they do um, is if you're if you're dealing with toy defenders mm-hmm. one of them behind another stops that 4k turn it does uh, uh, yeah it that, does, is, yes. that is a good point yes yeah, because each each of them is too a long. Two, too long, so two plus two is four, and they're going to have a bit of a gap between them, so they're not bumping. And with um, their ability to do the zero stop maneuver, yeah, they can afford to stay in place. I, yeah, ironically, there's one defender who could get around that, <laughs> Countess Ryder, because he's got a five straight that she can she do the K turn on that. So yeah, yeah, um, Countess Riad could uh, deal with that, but, but in, that's one in, would have to in get perfect really close. circumstances into uh, under. Yeah, under ideal conditions, Countess Riyadh could still K turn behind them. Mm. But that's just one rather yeah. than what the all ones of with, them. Rather than, yeah, all of them. And besides, you know, if you're going against Riyadh, you know that if you can plan for that by having all of them switch to landing mode. It's like, oh, look, Riyadh, all of them now are going to turn to face you yes. and then barrage you. Yes. So, there are, or you have one yeah. on one. So if she isn't doing that 5K turn, then you've got a shot firing in the correct direction. If she's, you, you can do it however you want, but the point is, mm. it, it, you can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of the interesting things we're going to see, specifically with the pivot wing landing, you stick veteran instincts on Cassie and Andor, push him up to pilot's galate, and you don't have to decide when you're whether you're flipping or not until you reveal the maneuver. So, um, the zero stop is effectively a zero stop and a zero K turn simultaneously until you've revealed it. It's true. Mm. Um, or yeah, again, as I was saying earlier, if we want those bait and traps that. You got it set though, and to go. No, I was never going to do that manoeuvre. Flip it over, and you've got the extra one agility. Mm-hmm. And also with him at pilot skill eight, as you uh, flip after you've done a manoeuvre, you can choose to put him into landing mode when he, you know, he's not going to have as many things pointing at him. Yeah. Mm. So he's going to survive that one agility turn on a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I think we're going to go. We're going to quickly go over the list again <coughs> that we've got set up tonight. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, viewers, you can vote by basically just say, stating which list you want to see by saying Robin Rebel, Robin Imperial, Robin Scum, or David's Rebel list. And let's go over them again. This time in more more in depth, guys, because you know 